All right, so my channel on YouTube is really small. I barely have over a thousand subscribers. And if you look at a majority of my videos, I have over 200 videos. Most of them have less than 500 views. Some of them only have 30 or 40 views. Yeah, that's right, 30 or 40. I have not hit the milestones to become monetized on YouTube. You need a thousand subscribers, which I do have, and you need 4,000 watch time hours over the last 365 days. That I do not have. So from YouTube standards, I am not able to monetize my channel. However, I have been able to make money through YouTube. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you exactly how I did that. I'm gonna share with you some of the principles behind it, as well as the concrete steps that you can take yourself to begin making money from YouTube videos. So I'm editing this video now and I forgot to mention that at the end of this video, I'm actually gonna share with you the specific ways which I've made money through YouTube without being monetized. So stick around till the end. And let me just make one thing clear. I'm not talking about making an exorbitant amount of money, right? I'm not talking about becoming the next Mr. Beast. I'm simply talking about how to generate some income through YouTube, even if you're not monetized. If you wanna learn how to do that, then keep watching this video. And for those of you who have not been here before, my name is Matt. I'm actually a therapist in private practice. If you haven't done so yet, go ahead and subscribe down below and hit the thumbs up button on this video. Only if you want to though, there is no pressure. All right, so the very first thing that we have to figure out is what your channel is going to be about. So what's the theme of your channel? What are you going to be talking about? What are your videos going to be centered around? So using my channel as an example, I decided to teach people about private practice. In particular, how to get started, how to grow, how to run a private practice. And even more than that, my channel was gonna be practical and actionable. So a lot of my videos are gonna be how-to videos, walking people through steps. So for example, one of my best videos is called How to Start a Private Practice in Six Steps. And these are the types of videos I'm gonna make, right? Actionable, practical, and about private practice. And this leads perfectly into our next step. And that's gonna to be to determine your value. I don't mean how much you're worth in monetary terms. I mean, what kind of value is your channel gonna to provide to people, right? So what questions are you gonna be answering? What is someone gonna walk away with after watching your YouTube videos? So for me, if I'm making videos about private practice, I'm obviously going to be reaching an audience of other therapists. So then my question is, well, what value am I gonna to provide to other therapists? That's what I want to answer. And then answering that question is gonna involve some other sub steps. And one of the most important sub steps and way to answer that question is by doing some basic market research. So what are the pain points of therapists in private practice? What kind of questions are they asking? What issues are they running into? And how do you find that out? Well, you can find that out by going on various Facebook groups, you can go into comment sections on different platforms and read what people are complaining about or getting upset by. You can reach out to your contacts or colleagues that you know who are in private practice. You can reach out to people who make up your audience, right? So former colleagues of mine who are in private practice, I was able to reach out to them and ask them, you know, what bothers you? What doesn't work? You know, what are some things you wish you had more of? And so I did some basic market research to find out what value could I provide? And in that market research, I realized that there were not many resources that were actionable and practical, right? There were resources about private practice and mindset and things like that, which are all really good. But there weren't many videos talking about, well, how, do you, how exactly do you do X, Y, Z? What is step one? What is step two? What is step three? So I figured that was a place I could come in. I could provide videos about actionable steps to start a private practice, right? So you have to ask yourself, what does my audience want? You know, what are their pain points? What are their issues? What value can I provide them? What questions can I answer? What issue can I alleviate? And this is largely gonna be your value, right? So if a client watch, so if someone watches your video, and then they walk away from that video having an answer to X, Y, Z, or being able to do something, that's your value. So once you decide on a theme and you've also decided what value you can bring, you can start making videos, right? And you wanna think about this not just as like, I'm making one video and I hope it does really well, or you know I'm just waiting to make that one awesome video. So you wanna think about each video as part of a larger structure. You wanna think about your YouTube channel as like a database or a place where someone can go to answer a variety of questions. You know, I hope someone can come to my YouTube channel, not just for that one video I made, but because they know that 
I have videos about all sorts of things related to private practice. I view each and every video as a piece to a larger system, right? And in this way, it takes a lot of pressure off that one perfect video. Although you wanna get a little bit better each and every video you make, it's not so much about that, it's about building a resource for people. Now, when it comes to actually creating videos, a lot of people get bogged down and thinking about, you know, I don't have the right equipment or it doesn't look perfect. And so my thought on that is that you just wanna start with what you have. If you have an iPhone, start with that. You know, if you have a camera, start with that, right? But it's not so much about the quality of your production. That's one thing I've learned. If you have the oldest iPhone, yet your content, like what you talk about, answers a major pain point for someone, that video will be valuable to your audience, right? It's more about what you're bringing to the audience in terms of the content, what are you saying, what questions are you answering, than it is about the production quality. Now, of course, as you start making videos, you wanna work on improving the quality over time because that will just make for a better experience overall. But don't get stopped right there. If the best you can at that moment is setting your phone up in front of you, leaning it up on a cup of coffee or something, well then do it that way, right? Start wherever you can, answer the questions, provide the value, and try to be as consistent as possible. Now you're gonna hear people say, you know, you need to post once a week or twice a week. Now, for some people, they have the time to do that. They can make one or two videos per week. And for other people, this is just not possible. Again, don't let this be the barrier. You do wanna work on consistency, but that's not gonna make or break you. Because again, we're not going for that one viral video. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to take our YouTube channel and make it a valuable resource. And this is gonna be a major factor in how we actually make money on YouTube without being monetized, all right? So be as consistent as you can. Make it as high quality as you can, but don't get bogged down. And as you do that, you'll then start to realize that you're beginning to build a structure. Each brick is starting to build a house and eventually a skyscraper of resources. As we begin to build that structure and make these videos, you're gonna to wanna to focus in on what your audience is actually responding to, right? So let's say you make a video, a how-to video about how to build guitars because that's what you wanted to do. And you realize, wow, you know, 25 people watched this video and then you made another video kind of walking people through your guitar collection and three people watched it. Well, you'll know that more people want the how-to videos. So then make your next video about how to do something related to guitars, right? So you also wanna start taking inventory of what's working and what's not working. So you'll notice YouTube has a lot of analytics that you can look at, and this is going to be really helpful. Now in the beginning, when you have one or two subscribers, you're not gonna have much data to work with, but you'll still have some. So no matter how much or how little data you have, use it and work with it and use that data to begin making informed decisions. And as you do that, your skyscraper, your house, your structure becomes more and more in tune with what your audience is looking for and it becomes more and more valuable for people. And the next thing you're going to do is to get involved. Don't be shy. Right now, I think a lot of times people have this understanding that you're gonna start a YouTube channel and just naturally people are gonna watch it and they're gonna find it organically. It's most likely not going to happen. Of course, there are the times when it can, but for most people, you're gonna have to, and quote unquote, market yourself. So for example, what I would do is I would make a video about a particular topic that I thought was helpful. Maybe it was a question I saw asked in a Facebook group, and then I would share it with people. You know, I would share it in the Facebook group or I would email it to colleagues who asked the question. And so what I started to do was make videos that I felt like were providing value to the audience. I wasn't quite sure. And then I would do my best to share it, you know? And it wasn't just hoping that people would watch it organically. I was really active. I was posting wherever I could. Um, of course, I wanted to be respectful. Not everyone wants you sharing your YouTube videos because it can get a little spammy. But wherever appropriate, wherever someone would allow me, I would share my YouTube video. And again, I was genuinely trying to answer questions. And I think people picked up on that. Right, so if you are trying to genuinely answer questions with your content, you're not just trying to bolster up yourself or you know promote yourself, but you're really trying to provide value to your audience, people are gonna notice that and they're gonna wanna watch it because it helps them. It actually helps them answer questions. It solves pain points, right? So after you make your videos, you start constructing this structure, share it, push it out. If you see someone ask the question, respond by answering with your video, right? Or if you're in a networking meeting or an event or something, you know, share your videos. This is where a majority of my opportunities to make money from YouTube videos began to arise, right? So for example, I remember I was in some forum about private practices and I had just made the video about how to start a practice. I think it was that video. And I shared it there because I genuinely thought it would help. And then someone responded and they said, hey, I wanna connect you to my colleague. They were a professor and I ended up writing a book chapter. I never thought that would happen, but it came because 
they were able to watch my video, right? And my video was what built my credibility with them. We didn't ever meet, you know, we didn't ever talk before anything. So they saw my video, they liked it, and then we connected and I was able to write a book chapter, not just because someone randomly watched my video, but because I shared it somewhere or I gave it to someone and then they shared it, right? And that's where a majority of your opportunities are going to come from. And you're gonna share with your target audience in whatever way you can. Another couple of tips for you here. Uh, let's say, for example, you're perusing the Facebook groups or some sort of forum that your audience is a part of and someone asks a question or you recognize that people are struggling with this particular software or platform, use that as an opportunity to go back and make a video about it. Uh, make a tutorial, answer the question, and then share the video. And then from there, people will notice that, they'll find value in it, and you'll be surprised. People will start to contact you, right? And uh, they'll start to ask you questions perhaps, or they'll wanna see more of your content. And you will you never know who's gonna watch that. And now right before I talk about all the different ways I've actually made money through YouTube without being monetized, let me just share this tip right here. You wanna stay consistent and not give up. Now, most people are not going to be the next Mr. Beast. We're not gonna have that next viral video. But that doesn't mean you can't produce a YouTube channel that is valuable. And with that being said, your growth might be really slow. I mean, I've been making YouTube videos almost weekly for over two years. I have just a little over a thousand subscribers, which I just got to. There are people who make videos and within two weeks, they have 100,000 or 200,000. So if you are gonna target a small audience or you really just wanna provide value to the audience that you're interested in, uh, it's okay for that growth to be slow. So don't get discouraged too easily and give up because maybe your video only has 100 views um, or you've been doing it for a couple weeks and you have three subscribers, that's okay. Uh, that stuff will come as you do it more often and more consistently, um, but you'll still have opportunities to make money even with 200 subscribers. If you follow the steps I just talked about, you'll begin to build credibility with your audience. They'll be able to walk away uh, with value after watching your content. So the two major things that you'll be doing with your YouTube videos is developing credibility and demonstrating to people that you wanna help them and that you actually can. And you, the cool thing is you can do that through videos. So following the outline that I just walked you through, right? These are the ways that I've made money on YouTube without being monetized. So one of the first ways is through consultations. Even with as little as like 100 subscribers, people would watch my video and they would call me or email me to schedule sessions one-on-one -on -one to help them start a private practice or to share my insights with them. And these would often come through my YouTube videos directly. Number two, there have been different companies that have reached out to me that were willing to pay me a fee to either work with them, produce videos for them, you know, this kind of thing. And that always happened after someone watching my YouTube video. Right, so I had one company, they watched my tutorial video and they liked the tutorial. I made it on my own, they didn't hire me to do it and they liked it and then they reached out and wanted to do a project with me. Additionally, I've been asked to do speaking events. So recently I spoke at New York University, NYU and I was able to speak to some of the graduate students about how to start a private practice. So they saw my video, they saw my website and they wanted me to speak to their class about that. And then finally, and this one is much smaller, but it does work. Um, the more credibility you build with your audience, the more people begin to trust you through your videos, and they decide that you do know what you're talking about, and you're actually able to provide them value, uh, they will use your affiliate links. So these are links that almost anyone has access to. A lot of software companies you'll see like on the top corner, a referral link or an affiliate link, it, that, the same thing, right? You would put this down in your description or wherever else you're posting content, and then people will watch your video and then click the link. They don't have to, they're not forced to, it's okay if they don't, but perhaps because they feel like, hey, you know, this guy knows what he's talking about, I like his recommendation, you know, I'll use that link down below. So that's another way as well. And so there you have it. If you follow these steps and you stay consistent and you don't give up and you're genuinely providing value to your target audience, you will certainly get opportunities to make money on YouTube without being monetized. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you learned something. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you soon.